Welcome to a uh, honest top five video of my uh, my favourite five ARPGs on the market at, currently at the moment. Now um, I get that there are a lot of ARPGs out there. These are simply limited to I guess the top five in my list or the top five that I continually come back to. But I thought I'd put this video together to sort of help you get an idea of what to play or maybe you're in between leagues and certain games or seasons and you don't know what to really have a, have a pun at. Well, uh, I guess this list is, uh, is my list of top five that, uh, that I would usually go to. Um, I guess I should also add, I'm going to be brutally honest in some areas and, uh, and yeah, it is what it is. All right, anyway, uh, let's, get, let's get through this list and, uh, and yeah, all right, uh, let's get to the first one. So the, um, the, I guess starting from number five, uh, the first one I would say would be Grim Dawn. Um, now it's like many other ARPGs or hack and slashes, uh, it's your old fashioned top down isometric dungeon crawler. Um, surprisingly created by an indie studio called Crate Entertainment, um, and this is going back from uh, 2010, I think they started making this game. And it's actually built from the old Titan Quest engine, and uh, also, I should put in brackets there, uh, Titan Quest is definitely on this list uh, for the guys that know exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, this is both a good and a bad thing for this game, but I guess we'll start with some positives on this. Um, so there's an absolute shit ton of content in this game to play through. Storyline wise, there's actually just been uh, two expansions released, uh, one being the uh, Ashes of Melmouth and the Forgotten Gods. I've played through both of them. There's a lot of hours in there. Like you've, you've got maybe, you know, 20 hours, 25 hours, at least in the campaign level. And that's per playthrough. And there are three playthroughs, um, as with most classic ARPGs. And there is a veteran mode, which makes it even interesting. Even more interesting, sorry. Um, but sort of from there, there are plenty of legendaries to farm in that process. There are, there's a metric ton of loot, um, currency. There's tons of craftables that you'll be, you know, farming all sorts of different things to, to get your hands on. There's sets that take ages to get, which is pretty fun when you get the set bonuses and things like that. As an overall, it's a, it's a well put together and well thought out ARPG. Um, that being said, there are some issues that I found with it, and uh, it really comes down to after about level 30, the game starts to become somewhat grindy, and it's sort of, or maybe grindy isn't the right word, but it becomes a little frustrating when you're just trying to progress, and the game sort of doesn't scale you to the level that you need to be to burn through enemies the way that you want to. Now, there are uh, points where you get that increase in power based on gearing things like that but after the first playthrough it starts to get a bit I guess in my case it started to get a, a, a bit slow um, now this might be different for other people I guess my pacing of games is a little bit different to other people's pacing um, the other thing that I'd probably say which was my biggest sore point in this game was the uh, the questing um, sort of seemed as though it was a little bit all over the place and uh, some more structure or a little bit more guidance in the in the in the HUD and UI would have been fantastic to make this perfect and allow you to complete all side quests efficiently. But that also being said, there is a component of research, um, like I guess WoW Classic, that makes this game a little bit more challenging than other games out there, and that's not a bad thing either. I think the market has become flooded with easy to play games, and I think having a bit of challenge in a game is fantastic. Now I've put about 70 hours into this game, um, give or take, probably closer to 80 at this point. Um, and while it wasn't a game that I really got heavily into, I definitely got addicted to it when I started playing through it. And that's why I've put this as number five on this list. Um, so yeah, definitely worth picking up. Also a very cheap game. Um, I think it's like 30 bucks or 40 bucks or something like that. It's not an expensive game considering the amount of content and hours that you get. All right, uh, I guess that'll uh, take us to number four on this list. So I guess uh, number four on this list is a little bit of a contentious one. Um, and I might cop some shit for putting this game as number four, but I genuinely think this is a number four out of five uh, contender. And there's a fair few reasons for this, but I guess I should probably start in saying I genuinely like Diablo 3, and that is the game that we're talking about here. Um, 
I've played it on every single port. I've bought it on every port, so I've got it on Xbox. For whatever reason, I got it on PlayStation 4. I don't know why. I think it was like 30 bucks. Um, I picked it up on Switch for when I'm traveling with work, and obviously I got it on PC when it very first came out, and we had, you know, the whole issue with the game not working and all the memes that came out about that anyway. So, a sum total of about 1,500 hours later, over the last few years, um, it's definitely not a bad game. It's had its down points, um, and I guess I'll get into the reason why this is number four on this list and not higher. Um, but definitely, from looking at it from a content perspective, you know, you've got like rifts, you've got greater rifts, um, you, you, you've got a fair bit of character progression to a degree. Um, also, one of the points that I'll raise about this game that I'm not particularly ha happy with, but also is one of the reasons why this game is, I guess, so accessible to the greater market. Um, I will say the classes, I love the classes, in particular the Paladin. Um, I've also always been a Barbarian fan, and you can definitely play a Whirlwind Barbarian um, in this game. Um, but I definitely love playing Hammonding Habiting, classes, which is pretty dope um, for the Paladin, or I guess the Crusader is what it's called. I'm thinking back to Diablo 2 days. Anyway, that gets me to the points that really frustrate me about this game. Number one, fucking Jay Wilson. Honestly, that guy should have never touched Diablo. Uh, whether or not you're on his side or not, um, when the game first initially shipped, after you completed, I think, the first, when you got to the last difficulty, there was a fucking death timer and all this other shit in this game. It was just insane. Uh, the, 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 the curve to try and complete the game was just absolutely absurd in the higher difficulties, which is something that really is a deterrent when you're, you know, trying to play a new game that you've been looking forward to for the past, like, five years. Um, the other problem is the game in its current state, while there are degrees of challenge when you start looking at rifting, things like that, it's just not the right type of challenging um, as far as the way that I look at ARPGs. Um, a lot of it is sort of focused around getting gear sets and I'm a big advocate for no gear sets in ARPGs or at least the gear sets that exist shouldn't be so overpowered that the entire game is built around you know running a specific set you know or was it of the earth set or whatever for like the barbarian and things like that um, I think in order to have a great ARPG there has to be variety and I see these videos about Diablo 3 builds and things like that, and this is not the scale of the game, but there's no such thing really as a build in Diablo. It's more or less just getting a full gear set and running the associated skills and getting the 800,000 DPS multiplier that goes with that skill. That's one of the issues that I have with this game. Aside from that, it's not a bad game. It's definitely got a lot of life. I've played 1,500 hours of it, so you know it's it's coming from somewhere it's definitely worth playing you can pick up battle chess for like 30 bucks and play diablo 3 and reaper of souls if you haven't played arpgs before this is probably a fantastic game to play graphically it's still a, a pretty good looking game uh by today's standards it's not bad at all um obviously diablo 4 is going to be drastically different to diablo 3 as what we could see from the uh from the trailers but Diablo 3 isn't a bad game, it's just had some misled direction and you can see where it's corrected over time, but one of the other issues I find with this game is the, uh, the patching is far and few in between and the significant changes to game mechanics just aren't significant enough to merit the changes being, uh, you know, a, uh, a, and for the better, better word, a game changer. Um, that all being said, I would still definitely suggest this in my uh, in my fourth out of my five favorite games as far as ARPGs go. It's a great game. I can't fault it based on you know a few you know niggly little points here and there. The, it, every game has their has their disadvantages and advantages. I think Diablo 3 is still a fun game to play, and I still come back to it you know at least once a year and have a bit of a go, have, have a bit of a, a crack at it and see what's going on. I you know run a brand new whirlwind barbarian every time I play it, and then breeze through the content, and then I'm like, all right, awesome, time to get back into the other game, which I will mention later on in this list. Um, 
All right, anyway, that leads me to uh, number three. All right, so uh, number three, Titan Quest. Now, I think I mentioned earlier I was going to put this uh, put this in my list. I definitely have this in my list. In fact, I'm playing this right now just as a sort of in-between game uh, to sort of get back into it. Um, while graphically it is not the most up-to-date game, its gameplay is phenomenal. Um, while Grim Dawn was built from the original engine that was used in Titan Quest, I actually still consider Titan Quest to be the better of the two games, um, which is saying something about how how good Iron Law did of a job on Titan Quest. And now that it's been restored by THQ Nordic, that makes it even better. So I guess I should go into why I like this game uh, in particular. And it's really circled around the content is amazing. Now we're talking about a game that's been going for 13 years and they've only just released two more expansions for the game, which has overhauled the graphics and, uh, and some quality of life features, um, being that the Atlantis expansion that's only just came out on Steam um, and is like 15 bucks, which is freaking awesome for a game that you can pick up for $5. Um, and that's my other point here is it's unbelievably cheap if you haven't got a lot of money to go and play on games and you really want to just play a good ARPG. Now another thing I should probably add here, back when I was a lowly university student, I actually was, I used to work for an EB Games and when I worked for EB Games we had a competition for a copy of uh, Bad Company 2. Now while I was waiting to uh, win that competition, which I did, which was fucking awesome, um, I actually ended up clocking about 140 hours of, uh, of Titan Quest up to the point where I was playing through like, you know, Endgame and everything else. And I gotta say, it was one of the best 140 hours um, I spent on playing a video game uh, probably in my life. It was a fantastic game. Just out, you know, I used to log in with my mates, have fun, you know, hours and hours of content, you know, grinding out gear and finding relics and you know, crafting relics and everything else in between was great. I actually didn't play as much Bad Company 2 as I expected because I ended up going back to Titan Quest. And uh, going back to Titan Quest like 10, I think it's 10 years on now, I still think it's a great game. It's definitely from a time when we were all waiting for Diablo 3 to come out and expecting how great Diablo 3 was going to be and then, you know, what we got was very different to what we expected we were going to get. But it's a great game. Um, like I said, it's no Diablo 4 level graphics, it's not going to blow your socks off, but if you want uh, just a great game to log in and play with some mates and, uh, and hours and hours and hours of content for a low cost, then Titan Quest is definitely your, uh, your game in this, in this situation. Now, uh, number two, this one has to be on every single best ARPG list that's ever been made. If it's not on that list, then I wouldn't even go and look at that list. You're just wasting your fucking time. And the person who's made it on YouTube knows absolutely diddly fuck all about a ARPGs. Uh, the second one is obviously Diablo 2. Now, I've actually met David Brabbit, um, one of the creators of Diablo 2, and I had a chat to him about Diablo 2 and his thoughts on other games. And honestly, he's just a genuine gamer who wanted to make a game for, you know, everyone. Now, that being said, he probably made a shitload of money. But aside from that, Diablo 2 is just one of those timeless games. Now, it is looking more aged these days, but I'll talk about how you get around that now. Um, it just has mechanics in it that were ahead of its time for, it, for its day. And even by today's standards, has a level of complexity and understanding and a level of content that even ARPGs struggle to achieve today. Like I look at games like Wilson, for example, where I expect more and I can still only get to level 20 in what is being called a beta. Now, I really wanted that game to be great. I struggle with that. Um, and maybe that's a video for another time. But Diablo 2, for what it is, is just amazing. And even if you take away the, uh, the Lord of Destruction expansion, which added you know, a huge amount of content back in the day when expansions were a thing, it still had a phenomenal amount of content, and challenge-wise, holy shit, soloing Diablo is still, you know, an achievement if you're playing at hell difficult difficulty, and you know, you're, you're self-finding gear and everything else, you know, single, it, it, it's, it's a single-player experience that gives you a sense of accomplishment, not to mention it's also, again, another really cheap game to buy in this day and age. Now, you might be asking, oh, 
jorgen you know it's an old game i'm not going to play a game on you know you know 640 by 480 or 800 by 600 well you don't have to do that because there are plenty of mods out there for this game too uh, the mod that I usually play on, which I think I've got other videos on this channel, um, as of recent, have been playing Diablo 2 with the uh, Median XL mod, which actually overhauls a lot of the uh, crafting elements, a lot of the gearing. Um, it has a server-side uh, season system, um, and it also has a new client, which basically allows you to use, a, I think it's a direct glide or direct 3D function to, um, to upscale the game to 1080p while maintaining, um, I guess, the level of quality um, in, in the field that, that you would expect the game to run at. Now, um, I think that's fantastic. It has a multiplayer element, it has a community behind it for this particular mod, uh, and it even has an end game built into it now where it's not just doing bail runs, but it actually has map drops, um, like in Path of Exile and games like that. Um, I think this is fantastic to keep Diablo 2 alive and I definitely think it's worth checking out in this day and age. If you've watched any of the other videos that I've posted up about Media and XL, um, it's definitely worth the time and Diablo 2 is, if you haven't played through Diablo 2 and you're a fan of ARPGs, and I know I guess speaking to the older, older audience they have played this sort of game, but definitely for the younger audience, Diablo 2 is, is a game that, you know, you should, uh, you should try and you'll probably find you'll fall in love with it and you'll understand why us older guys are saying, you know, less basic games, more and more complex games. And, you know, obviously the audience of WoW Classic is this exact, uh, I, I guess, audience that has come from a game that they know they knew to be much more comp complex and this is something that the market is asking for in this day and age as opposed to dumbing it down and making it, you know, console worthy or worthy of, you know, the, uh, the younger generations of people to understand. Um, now I'm not an old, old guy, I'm you know, reaching that 30 point and this was definitely a game that I loved back in the day. Um, anyway, uh, that's enough about Diablo 2 because we've got to get to number one um, so we don't have a two hour video on our hands. All right, and uh, yeah, that'll lead me to the next game. So our number one pick is obviously Path of Exile. And I've made mention to it um, in the last, I guess, uh, except on Diablo 2. I didn't want to talk too much about it until this point, but quite frankly, in this day and age, Path of Exile is king as far as ARPGs go. Now, um, again, I've spoken, I've actually met David Brevik. Um, I actually went to Exile Con, and that's where I met David Brevik. And uh, in his words, it is the spiritual successor of Diablo 2. His exact words that is quoted from David Brevik. Um, I've met the guys who make Path of Exile, and they're fucking awesome dudes. Um, you can really tell that they're a guy that, you know, they're, they're guys that love the game that they're making because they're making a game for themselves, not, you know, for an investment company. Now, throw away all the bullshit on Tencent, whatever else, and the whole, let's just remove the politics from gaming altogether. It, Grinding Gear Games is a company that makes games for gamers. And there's a lot of, I guess, uh, a lot of shit online with people saying, Do you have, uh, saying Path of Exile is too hard, it's too hard. It's a hard game. But when you take the time to learn anything, then it becomes obviously easier and you progressively learn as you go. This is the concept of studying and the concept of doing anything in life. The same should apply to games. Games should not be... The games with a certain degree should be able to be picked up and easily played. But sometimes if you really want to invest into a game, then spending the time to understand that game is a better way of getting more value out of that game. I could go to the shop and buy a brand new Call of Duty for $80 and I know what I'm going to do in that game. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to point and I'm going to shoot and use a mouse and keyboard or a control, it's really easy. In Path of Exile, there's this huge build tree that you have to understand the mechanics of and sometimes the best way to learn is by learning by failure and laughing and actually having fun. This is what Path of Exile allows you to do. It allows you to learn by making mistakes and then you know the next league or the next character comes by you learn how to build that character. You look at guides, you do your research. That's what makes Path of Exile a fantastic game. It's because it's not a game that leads you directly to the end point. It's a game that guides you in somewhat of a degree 
so that you can experiment and you can play the game how you want to play the game. And in fact, this is a free game, which makes it even better because you can piss as much time as you want away. You don't have to spend a cent. Now, I've put money into this game. I've obviously paid for ExileCon and I regret nothing of what I've spent on this game. And in fact, I found myself spending money on this game being the only game that I'm buying these days or buying packs for and things like these days and I'm not buying other games because I simply just don't need to. Now the other things that people should understand about Path of Exile which is why it's the best game out there is every three months it has a, what's called a league reset and basically every three months a new mechanic, a new expansion usually once a year a major expansion like the Conquerors of the Atlas comes out on the 13th I believe um, that comes out and that's a massive mechanic overhaul and then every single league there's a new mechanic that goes into the game which is a whole new set of rules that you have to play by that, that you can play by and you can learn new crafting methodologies new ways to play the game you know new ways to combine that knowledge and that content with previous content to create these ridiculous builds quite frankly there's some guys on youtube that create some unbelievable builds that are just ridiculous they break the game they break the engine the developer is trying to get you to break the engine and you know it depends on how much time you want to invest how much research you want to do and it's really what whatever you want to get out of the game is what you're going to get out of the game and this is what makes path of exile one of the best ARPGs of all time and is definitely the reason why it's number one on my list. Um, I should add that Path of Exile 2 has also been announced and if you look up PoE 2 there's plenty of videos on that and basically PoE 2 is a complete graphics overhaul which is on par with Diablo 4 if not better than Diablo 4 and I've actually played the uh, played the hands-on demo of Path of Exile 2 and can vouch for the fact that PoE 2 is fucking awesome um, it looks amazing um, one of my friends was not huge on Path of Exile because of the graphics on the game and its current I guess the current way it's set up he played PoE 2 and went fuck I'm just gonna play PoE 2 fuck wasting money on Diablo 4 now you know there's no reason that there is space in the market for all of these games but PoE just does it in such a great way. I should also note PoE 2, even if you start PoE 1 now, it will be blended in with PoE 2. PoE 2 is simply just a storyline expansion and new mechanics added to the existing game. The existing game is going to be upgraded alongside PoE 2 and this is progressively going to happen in the next four patches or so, or next three patches. And, you know, that's even better knowing that this game that has already been around, I think, for seven years is going to continue to be around for another seven years and then PoE 3 and then another seven years. It's just going to continue, continue, continue because it's made by people who don't want to change the, I guess, the cardinal rules of what their existing game was. They just want to continue it on and make sure that that market stays with that game and service that market. And this is the sort of game... Or business that you want to support the AAA companies these days are not doing what some of these smaller companies are doing this studio knows that they are not going to end up with you know 10 million sales like you know Call of Duty or whatever but they are aware that for the market that exists for their game they are going to provide the best product that they can and they do and it's the reason why I've been playing this game since it came out in I think beta and I've been playing it for the last seven years and I regret nothing about that and I've told people over and over again this is a game that you need to play and it's why I'm suggesting this game as my number one right now and definitely worth anyone's time who is an ARPG fan it's even on Xbox and it's on PlayStation 4 and I've tried the mobile version and the mobile version while it's still in a very alpha stage is going to be friggin awesome and there's no ads there's no nothing in it that nothing that's pushing you to spend money like every other mobile ARPG out there at least from what I've seen so far and that's even better because you can take this game mobile you can play it on your consoles and you can play it on your PC and it runs on you know a moderate PC you don't need an OP PC to run it and that's I guess the other sell point there and it's on Steam it's not on the Epic Store so no one likes the Epic Store Oh, and I should also add the community in this game is fantastic. And after going to ExileCon and meeting, you know, 1,200 other Exilers or, you know, 1,199 other Exilers out there, I can definitely say the community is fantastic. And uh, I've definitely met some great drinking buddies that I'll probably meet hopefully sometime in the future. 
and uh, and hop on and play some uh, some maps with them. But uh, that's my number one pick. So uh, I guess we're at the end of the video. I hope that what I've discussed has helped. Um, I do build guides for Path of Exile, obviously. Um, I post Diablo 2 Media and Excel videos, um, and I'll put the link to Media and Excel in the uh, description below. And uh, and yeah, um, fingers crossed. This is going to help you figure out what you want to play, or it's going to figure out those other exiles out there uh, what to play in between games. Um, yeah. So uh, I guess until next time. Thanks for watching.